Hey guys, welcome back to another tech show video. Today I've got a kind of strange little gadget that no one has ever heard of and probably no one even cares about, but that's totally alright with me because I really want to experience this for myself and see what it's all about. This is the iTelco IDLE, IDLE being an acronym for Internet Device on Linux. But iTelco, is that some kind of company that makes a lot of mobile devices like the IDLE? Actually no. Itelco is an Italy-based radio and television equipment company that really has absolutely nothing to do with mobile devices like the one we're looking at in today's video. Just take a look at their website and you'll discover they make no mention of ever being in the mobile devices industry. Perhaps they weren't so proud of this thing. But I was able to find a website from around 2008 that suggests Itelco had some sort of mobile devices division. The Itelco SPA website found on archive.org was only captured a couple times in 2008 and 2009 but other than a random capture in 2011, it looks to me like this website was only there from late 2008 to early 2009, suggesting their mobile division didn't last very long. On this website, there's a list of mobile phones apparently made by iTelco, but most of them seem to be pretty obscure, and I can't find anything about them. One phone, the IT2500, does seem to have made its way to some people, but it's the only one I can find even a little bit of information about. I'm getting a little off topic though, because what we're looking at today isn't a cell phone at all. Instead, this is what they called a MID, or mobile internet device. Let's go ahead and unbox it. On top, we've got the Itelco Idol itself, and underneath that we have quite a few accessories. Looking at the accessories first, we've got a nice little protective pouch for the device to rest in while not in use. Although some people really have something against these things, I think for the device like this, it's actually really useful. I actually really appreciate the inclusion of this thing and I'll definitely be using it. Next up, we've got a gray microfiber cloth, which is definitely a useful inclusion, but I honestly don't like this type of microfiber cloth. It's one of those more scratchy type of cloths, I just prefer the softer ones. Not a huge deal, just my personal opinion. Next thing in the box, we've got a mini USB to USB-A cable for connecting the idle to your desktop or laptop computer in case you want to transfer files. Then we've got a really cheap looking pair of earbuds. Yeah, I didn't test these out, but I can only imagine what they probably sounded like. Next, we've got a very unattractive looking Itelco branded USB flash drive that has restore software for restoring the highly customized version of Linux this thing ships with. Then we've got a user guide and a quick start guide, both of which are mostly in Italian. Next up, we've got the power adapter, which unfortunately only comes with a European style wall plug, but fortunately for me, this is a switching adapter and I do have this little adapter here that makes it plug just fine into one of my outlets. It's kind of silly looking, but it works. Last but not least, we've got an extra stylus in case you lose the other one that comes in the device, because yeah, it's pretty easy to lose these little things. And that's all you get in the box. More than I was expecting, honestly. Now to talk about the device itself. This is a pretty cool little gadget. As you can see, it picks up fingerprints pretty quickly, so that included microfiber cloth is really useful. Another thing that's useful is that carrying pouch. This thing feels pretty cheap and creaky, not very confidence inspiring. I absolutely wouldn't want to carry this device without the case. Anyway, let's take a tour around the Itelco Idol and see what we've got going on here. On the left side of the device, we've got the stylus silo for holding the stylus when it's not in use. On the right side, we've got two status LEDs for the power and Wi-Fi, and there's this weird connection that I don't know what it's for. On the bottom, we've got the power port, a microphone, and a power switch. Up on top, we've got a mini USB port for connecting the device to a computer, and a micro SD card slot under this little port cover door, which you probably will want to use because this only has 4 gigabytes of internal storage. Next to that, we've got a volume rocker. To the right of that, and under this port cover door, we've got a single full-sized USB-A port for plugging in any USB devices you would connect to a normal computer, like USB flash drives. Next to that, we've got a headphone jack, and then last, there's this two-step camera button. On the back, we've got a single speaker, a 3 megapixel camera, and a recessed reset button. Now, on the front, where all the magic happens, we've got a front camera, a 4.8 inch touchscreen, and over here on the right, we've got this so-called smart key, which I will talk about in a little bit. Sliding the front up reveals a full QWERTY keyboard underneath. Of course, this keyboard pretty much sucks, but again, we'll get to that later. Right now, it's time to plug this thing in and get it booted up. Before we go much further, I want to apologize for the terrible lighting and viewing angles you're going to see. I readjusted my lights and camera settings, but I never really got it to look great. This screen isn't that great in real life, but it's much better than what it looks like on camera. But anyway, let's explore the software here. 
I was really hoping for a more normal desktop version of Linux, but nope. What we've got here is a version of Linux called Midinix, which is developed by a group of Asian software companies called Asianix. Midinix was developed for devices like the Itelco Idle, which as I mentioned earlier are in a family of devices known as MIDs or mobile internet devices. Hence, Midinix being a combination of the acronym MID and the word Linux. Now this operating system is pretty well optimized to run on mobile devices with small displays, so it works great on this thing. No complaints there. My complaint with this operating system lies in the fact that it is too well optimized for this device to the point of it being very locked down. And the worst thing of all, there is no way that I know of to install third party apps. But anyway, getting back to our main topic, let's take a look at the specs on the Itelco Idol. We've got an Intel Atom Z500 processor, clocked at 800 MHz, 512 MB of RAM, and 4 GB of internal storage. But of course, like I mentioned earlier, you can easily add more storage with a micro SD card. We also have all your standard wireless options like Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and even GPS functionality. Now let's explore this UI to see what Midinix has to offer, starting with the app tray at the bottom of the screen. The first item we have on the tray is this button that says Alice Mobile. I didn't mention this earlier, but pretty much the biggest selling point for this device back when it launched was the fact that it had cellular connectivity through Italian telecom company Alice Mobile. This meant that you could get online through cell service like a mobile phone, even if you didn't have access to Wi-Fi. This button on the iTel Telco Idle though is just a collection of links to various Alice mobile stuff. However, this is actually the only way to get online with the Idle anymore because there is no other way to open up the web browser except for tapping on one of these links. It will try to take you to the Alice mobile website, but Alice mobile is dead, so that doesn't actually work. Of course, this is just a normal web browser. I think it's some version of Firefox, so you can just type in any URL down here in the URL entry box as long as the website isn't too fancy because, of course, this is an outdated browser. Which brings me back to the annoying fact that you can't install any apps on here. I would have loved to install another browser to get at least a little bit better web browsing experience, but I had no luck with that. Anyway, then we've got the Instant Messenger, which is pretty much what it sounds like. It lets you sign in with the IM service of your choice and have instant messaging on the go. Probably doesn't work anymore, so I didn't even test it. Next up, we've got our standard media stuff like a music player, photo viewer, video player, camera, and ebook reader. Nothing too special here. We'll come back to the camera later, but next up, we've got one of my favorite categories, the office stuff. In particular, Writer, Calc, and Impress. If those apps sound familiar to you, they should, because these are indeed apps from the OpenOffice suite. The Itelco Idol ships with the full, unmodified version of the OpenOffice 3.0 suite, which is pretty cool, but it kind of highlights the reason you can't install third-party apps on here. For one thing, it's not a very polished experience with all the tiny buttons that are obviously meant to be clicked on with a mouse, not tapped on a tiny touchscreen. Not only that, but it doesn't really seem to like this keyboard. For example, the period button button doesn't seem to work, it just puts a comma. Seems like a small issue, but it makes it pretty much impossible to use for anything. Since this thing does have a full word processing program, I actually thought about using it to write the script for this video, but there being no period was an absolute deal breaker, so I decided against trying to do that. It of course didn't help that this keyboard really just kind of sucks. The keys are so flat and small, and at the top of the keyboard, there really isn't enough room so your fingers end up bumping into the top slide part. But to be honest, that's just par for the course on devices like this. You shouldn't be too surprised it's not going to be the best device for writing a novel or even a YouTube script. After all, it does have a USB port, so you technically could connect a full-sized USB keyboard to this thing and you'd have no issue. That would work just great. But enough about the keyboard, let's continue on with these apps. Next up, we've got the Stock app, which is just a shortcut to the Yahoo Finance website. Next, we have this compass, which I actually don't know what it's supposed to do because it doesn't seem to do anything, and I didn't bother reading the instruction manual, so I'll just call it the Mystery Compass. Next, we've got the Games category, which has three classic Linux games, Nibbles, Notsky, a Klotsky clone, and Solitaire. All three of these games are actually full desktop Linux games, which is pretty cool and kind of nostalgic for me because I can remember playing Nibbles on my first Linux machine, which was really just a live boot of Ubuntu. But anyway, last up we've got the accessories being a file manager and a calculator. These are both pretty straightforward being exactly what you would imagine. The calculator is just a basic calculator and the file manager is a basic file manager. One funny thing I noticed in the file manager is that it says the name of this device is IdeaPad U8. The weird thing is, there actually was a device from Lenovo called the IdeaPad U8, but it doesn't have anything to do with the Itelco Idol. 
The only thing I can guess is that the company that made the idol was also the company that made the IdeaPad U8, and they just reused some of the software. And yeah, I haven't mentioned this yet, but iTelco didn't actually make the idol. This is really just a rebadged device from a Chinese electronics company called iGo. They apparently still exist and make tons of various electronics like flash drives, battery banks, earbuds, just all kinds of random electronic stuff, but I digress. Getting back to what I was talking about earlier, with the weirdness of this device being named IdeaPad U8, there was so much rebranding and reusing of software and hardware with all these mid devices, it's really hard to track down who made what. Like when I mentioned earlier that this device was actually made by iGo, yeah, I'm not actually sure about that because Gigabyte had a device that looked just like this, and then there was the Compile version. Everyone was trying to capitalize on these mid devices by putting their name on them, and yet today, no one even remembers them. For many of you, this is probably your first time even hearing the acronym MID. For me anyway, this iTelco Idol is the first MID I've ever used or even seen. To be fair though, these were definitely more popular outside of the US where portable computing was far more diverse. But again, I'm getting off track. Let's continue talking about the iTelco Idol because there are a few things I haven't covered yet. First, this so-called smart key here. I absolutely hate the fact that this thing is here. First off, all it does is open this little menu that gives you shortcuts like a way to jump back to the home screen a web browser shortcut, and a shortcut to power options. Aside from that, it doesn't do anything else. No customization options at all. Not only do I think that this is kind of pointless, I think it's using up space that would have been perfect for a trackpad or some kind of navigation thing for using this thing with two hands. I've even shown this device to people and they always expect this smart key thing to be a touchpad of some sort, because that would just be a perfect ergonomic design, just that's what you would expect, but it's not. Super unfortunate if you ask me, but I guess it is what it is. Another feature I want to mention is this 3 megapixel camera. Not a whole lot to talk about here, as you can see it's pretty much what you'd expect from a device like this. You can also shoot video with this thing, but it's also pretty much what you'd expect. Nothing fancy for sure. The last feature I want to talk about is this processor. I call it a feature only because this is an x86 based processor plenty capable of running a much more substantial operating system than what is on here right now. In fact, there were apparently some versions of this device from other companies that shipped with Windows XP from the factory, which would be absolutely awesome, because if you didn't already know, I love Windows. Windows XP. Unfortunately, this device didn't get enough interest for the official Windows XP drivers to be released, or at least if they were released at one time, they've pretty much all disappeared now. But if you'd like to see a video where I attempt to install Windows XP or maybe some other Linux distro on here, let me know in the comments below. Anyway, that's gonna be it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this quick look at the iTelco Idol. To be honest, I really bought this as a project device. Like I said earlier, I'm hoping to eventually install Windows XP or some more advanced operating system on here. If you'd like to see that make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future videos and yeah thanks so much for watching everyone i appreciate everyone who watches these videos and if you enjoyed this video it'd be awesome if you could give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comments below thanks again for watching i'll see you in the next video